One storm system is winding down, another storm system is winding up, and a big change to the weather pattern is on the way, bringing multiple storm systems, the potential for severe weather, and even a taste of fall to areas that haven't seen much of it. Meanwhile, the tropics are making noise, and that might just end up being a weather wild card over the next two weeks. And that's where we're going to start right here, right now, with our tropical update. Hello there friends, welcome into the channel. Jason is my name. I'm so glad that you are here with me to track the weather on the Ides of October. Yeah, it's the 15th of the month. It is hump day and we have a lot of weather to get into today. A lot of things are changing over the next two weeks. That's why you are subscribed to this channel. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button right down below and give the content a like. Turn on those notifications, put these videos out every day, and every time a weather event happens, you'll be informed of what's going on. And uh, certainly leave a comment if there's anything I can be in prayer about. Please put it in the comment section. I pray for you guys every single day, and thank you for your support. And certainly let me know where you're commenting from or if you have a question. I read and respond to all those. In the meantime, folks, a lot of things on this map today on our satellite picture out in the Atlantic. And a lot of colors out here. There's that low pressure that departed from the East Coast. And it is out here front along that. Another system out here. And uh, we're just watching. There's Lorenzo right here just scrolling around out in the Atlantic. And some wave activity coming off the coast of Africa in our ITCZ. This is the area that we're watching. That area of convection there is moving to the west. And it will get into the Caribbean over here within the next week. And that's where the fireworks may just begin. As a matter of fact, take a look here at the GFS. We've run this out to seven days and already there's that low in the Caribbean. This would be October the 22nd. This is mid next week. Look what happens as we get on out toward the end of next week. We've got a big hurricane developing out here, impacting the DR and uh, Puerto Rico is uh, just right over here, just to the east of the DR. But we've got Haiti and uh, the DR really inundated here with rain and wind and into Cuba as well. And eventually the GFS just tracks it right through those really warm waters down there in the Caribbean, comes up, kisses Florida, kisses Cape Hatteras, kisses Cape Cod, and then rolls up in toward Nova Scotia to end the run. That's two weeks out. So that's the GFS. What about the European? What does it show? Well, run this out to seven days too. Not much is going on, but eventually as we get on out here toward day 10, start to get a reflection of a low here in the Caribbean as well. A little bit farther to the south is where the European wants to develop this and then eventually gets its act together once it gets out of the Caribbean across Cuba and starts to strengthen and then takes a last minute sort of left turn as it gets up the coast toward Cape Hatteras as a big blocking ridge comes over the top. We've seen this before several times through the hurricane season and it has not played out just like that yet. What about the AI? We look at our AI tools because they've done pretty well so far this tropical season. And you can see the European AI really shows not a whole lot to be worried about down here in the Caribbean. So that is another tool that's a puzzle piece that's on our table as we try to put this puzzle together. We're seven to 10 days out before this thing even forms. So very, very silly and foolhardy to try to figure out a potential track for something that hasn't even formed, particularly a tropical cyclone. But it is good to note that there is a possibility of it, and most of the operational models are showing this. Here's the European Ensemble Suite. Yesterday had seemed like a lot more members showing it, so we backed off a little bit, and most of them track this wave and don't really get it going until it's over here in the Central Caribbean and uh, towards South uh, or Central America here. So we're going to have to watch how this all plays out. But the European does have a signal for it. The ensemble does. The GFS ensemble is a little bit more enthusiastic and it develops the low pressure here in the basically in the Eastern Caribbean and then tracks most of the tracks kind of take it into the Western Caribbean before it eventually would turn it to the north if we ran this on out in time. And the Google DeepMind is a little bit less enthusiastic as well, but some of the members do develop it. And the big takeaway from all of this is that in about seven to 10 days, we have a pretty strong signal for a new tropical cyclone developing in the Caribbean. And eventually the way it looks like it would move up in this direction off the East Coast yet again, as we look way on out in time, there looks to be sheer to contend with. So the Caribbean is 
fairly tranquil in terms of a shear environment, but look just to the north of it as we roll this on forward, just off the coast of uh, into the Gulf and off the southeast coast, we've got this big orange area. So anything that gets into this is going to be sheared and kind of want to be steered over toward the east. And so that's what we've got to watch as we go out in time. We also have our background state. Here's the tropical Atlantic way over here. Oranges and reds are not conducive, all that conducive for tropical cyclone development or maintenance. But look what happens once we get out beyond 10 days. We start to get some whites back in here. So a neutral state, and even some of the operational models show some green associated with some of these rising pockets of convection and potential tropical cyclone development. So we've got a set of conditions coming together to potentially produce one last major storm before we kiss tropical season goodbye, hopefully for good, but this is something to watch over the next 10 days, and I will watch it here and report to you every single day as we watch things develop. That's what we've got for the tropical update. Now we're going to take a look at what's coming up over the next several days in terms of severe weather. We've got some cooler weather pushing into parts of the U.S. We've got a big cold front moving through and some snow is falling. So we've got a lot to look at. We're going to take a look at that pattern change underway and wrap up with space weather where we're looking at the potential for geomagnetic storm conditions yet again in just a couple of days. But it just wouldn't be cold rain's weather world without a weather IQ question, would it? And today's weather IQ question is once again about boundaries, this time boundaries here on planet Earth. What is the boundary that separates two air masses of similar temperature but different densities? Here are your choices. Cold front, warm front, dry line, or occluded front? If you know the answer or just want to guess, type it in the comments. If not, as always, I'll have the answer for you at the end of the show along with another fun fact or two that you just might want to stick around for. Right now, stick around for the weather forecast for the rest of this week into the weekend. Our weather situation out there today is pretty cloudy here in the west and across the northern tier into the Great Lakes area and rain is falling out from some of these clouds all the way from Erie, Pennsylvania, back through Madison, Wisconsin, the Chicagoland area, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin, back in to uh, central Iowa here, Des Moines, and even just north of Salina down here in uh, Kansas. So we're looking at plenty of rainfall this morning in terms of showery activity out west. Got that big storm system. You can see that showing up really nicely here. Look way out here in uh, the Pacific coming toward the Aleutians. Another big ocean storm moving in this direction, folks. But right now we've got clouds and snow and rain, snow in the higher elevations and rain showers all the way back from California up into central Montana through Utah and Nevada and Wyoming and Idaho, all experiencing some showers at this hour. Taking a look here at the Oh boy, this is the air quality map, and the air quality is not so great down here near Dallas and around Houston and San Antonio. It's been a stagnant pattern, and it's been very warm, and also we have some air quality issues up here near Portland and Salem, just to the southwest of those or southeast of those areas, and up here in central Washington with some wildfire smoke up there. But the weather situation is really... Got a big storm system that's working through the inner mountain west, headed up toward the Dakotas and a big stationary front separating cooler air up here from warmer air surging in down south. And that is what is going on in showers and thunderstorms could be breaking out later today as this low pressure winds up and moves off toward the north and to the east. In the meantime, we have energy in the mid-levels of the atmosphere driving all this. There's that big storm system that is showing up but swirling around on the satellite image. Big high pressure ridge down here over Texas and uh, the south central plains area. Another little tiny piece of colors here in the mid-levels. This is helping to spark off some of those showers through the Great Lakes region. That will die out. That ridge will continue to build over the next couple of days. That storm system will move in to the northern plains. Low pressure will be out ahead of that moving away and another piece of energy around the base of that will break off, move through the southern plains as we get on into the weekend into the mid-Mississippi Valley, spawn a low pressure center that heads toward the Great Lakes, drags a cold front through as we go through the weekend into the southeast. And look at that big 
punch coming in here. That's going to be behind a cold front. So we're going to get a quick shot of fall into the southeast, even into the central plains where it's been very warm. And that cold front that comes through is going to spit out some showers and some thunderstorms as well. And you kind of see how that plays out with the surface map. There's that low pressure winding up this afternoon, bringing some showers and unsettled weather out to the west. And you can see it getting its act together, sliding up into north and south Dakota. Uh, look for some thunderstorms over the panhandle of Nebraska up into South Dakota, even back into Kansas this afternoon with some potentially some wind and hail reports, but it just on an isolated basis, we would expect any severe weather. As we go on out through tomorrow evening, that threat will shift a little bit farther east. Plenty of rain still to be found up in eastern Montana into the Dakotas and even out ahead as a, a front extends out ahead of that into northern Wisconsin. And as we get on into Friday, you can see the main primary storm system pull up into Canada. There's the cold front. Another piece of energy will break off and form a secondary low as we get towards Saturday evening. So look for Saturday evening a potential for severe weather up and down the mid Mississippi Valley. That's where we could find uh, potentially more in the way of more reports of wind and hail and maybe even a tornado or two in this area Saturday afternoon that will push on to the east as we get on into Sunday. And you can see overnight Sunday that front is beginning to push off the east coast, but certainly in the Carolinas and the southeast up into the uh, mid Appalachians, Cumberland Plateau and getting it into the interior sections of the northeast Sunday afternoon and evening. We'll have to watch those areas for rain and potential severe weather as well. Just a general look at the pattern as we go on out here and how it will play out. Reds are ridging and higher heights in the mid-levels. Blues are troughing and that means stormy conditions and cooler weather at the surface. Under the reds you'll find warmer weather at the surface generally speaking. And as we go on out through this week you can see that ridge between two troughs, one on the west coast, one on the east coast. And uh, that will keep us cool in the east, at least through the balance of the week, relative to normal. And then that trough will push out in the east. The trough will push that ridge to the east, and it will move west. And you can see that play out here Saturday. And then just as we get on in toward next week, just a barrage of systems moving across the northern tier, followed by a ridge, followed by another trough. And uh, that's how it sort of plays out. So we're going to get one system after the, after the other, kind of move across the northern tier, bringing cold fronts through, bringing a shot of fall here and there uh, along and behind those cold fronts as they move in. But they'll be transitory, so we'll just get rounds of rain. Particularly, the dynamics will stay across the north and keep all of the heavy, heavy weather up across the nation's midsection and to the northeast. And it's drag cold fronts through with scattered showers and maybe some storms around on uh, the uh, southern end of those back through the central plains, potentially into the southeast. Temperatures over the next couple of days, 40s and 50s across the north for highs today, particularly in the northeast, going to be pretty chilly in, in the northern plains. Warm 80s and then 90s as you get on down here towards south Texas. Not too bad out west. As we get into tomorrow, that warmth surges as that storm builds and pushes into Canada. You're going to get a big surge out ahead of that. And a cold front comes through with southerly winds, bringing some of those 70s in to the Midwest, still chilly in the Northeast and in the Northern Plains out West. And then uh, that will warm up a little bit gradually as we head toward Friday and then to Saturday in the east. And then that ridge will back off as a cold front pushes through and squashes that ridge as we get on into the weekend. So 50s up here and 60s into the plains. And we'll feel a little punch of cool air behind that. And the northwest stays in pretty good shape. As we look at low temperatures over the next couple of days, the cool spots are out here in the western third of the country or the western maybe fourth of the country and then up here in the northeast that's going to be chilly tonight find some temperatures below freezing in those areas everybody else warm in the middle of the country and same again on friday and the same again on saturday as that cool air pushes in behind that cold front that will be pressing into the midwest as we work through the weekend and you can see that cold temperatures are advancing to the east as we go later on into the weekend and it stays cool up in the north East. Ten, six to ten day period covering October the 20th through the 24th. Uh, mostly the signal for above normal is up here across the northern tier in that six to ten day period across the southern tier as well with much below readings looking to take hold out west as additional storm systems are coming into the west coast and then sort of a slight above normal signal here across the central portion of the country into the mid-Atlantic and upper southeast and then Alaska and Hawaii both above and then precipitation much of the nation above normal normal below down here in the desert southwest, but as those cold fronts come in, they're going to tap some of that gulf moisture at least a little bit and bring in some showers. And uh, like I said, it's going to be an active pattern, Hawaii and Alaska, both above normal as well, folks. That is your forecast of the week. We're going to take a look at that space weather and what's coming up there because we have some solar wind 
and we're going to be in minor to moderate geomagnetic storm conditions, likely. Well, green across the board here on the KP, that means it's quiet from a solar storm standpoint, but we don't expect it to stay that way. As a matter of fact, if you look up here, predicted G2 conditions, that's moderate over the next day or so. The reason for that is that we had a couple of sunspots that erupted in terms of solar flaring. Not big solar flares, but a couple of slow-moving CMEs were ejected and they're headed our way, enhancing the solar wind, and that will interact with our magnetosphere, put us in minor solar storm conditions. We've got another coronal hole turning toward us. That will enhance the solar wind through the weekend, so we'll look to see how that affects us, but likely we'll be in minor geomagnetic storm conditions. Couple of M-class solar flares there on the X-ray chart, but no CMEs with those big sunspots. The scary ones here, the red ones are turning away. The one that looks the uh, most suspicious down here, 4152, is turning toward us on the lower limb, and uh, the umbra there is gaining complexity and size. So we're gonna watch that one particularly as it moves toward us, but a filament could snap at any point in time. Nothing going on here in the United States, just a couple of small shakes down in Texas and California, two point something on the moment magnitude scale. But look over here, what is that? Wow, that is a 5.4 on the island of uh, Yap in Micronesia. What is Micronesia? Well, it's a cluster of 607 islands out in the Western Pacific. It covers a land mass, or the total land mass is 270 square miles, but it covers more than a million square miles of the Pacific Ocean. And the capital is located on the island of Pompeii and not on the island of Yap, as is commonly thought. Okay, that is where Micronesia is. And in the meantime, nothing else is going on earthquake-wise or volcanic-wise. But now you know a little something about Micronesia, and now you know a little something about the moon because it's going down, and it's down at 32% in terms of its brightness, waning crescent now, and it is going to new moon status here on October the 21st. There is your day and night map. The sun is coming up here in the eastern portion of the country, still dark, and people are sleeping along the west coast, but hopefully when you wake up, first thing you do is turn on Cold Rain's Weather World, get a quick weather update, and the answer to today's weather IQ question. The question was, what is the boundary that separates two air masses of similar temperature but different densities? And out of all of these choices, the correct answer is a dry line. You see that a lot in the springtime out in the plains where Warm uh, air flows off the mountains, slopes down, dries out, and that dry line of air off the Rocky Mountains pushes well east of the Rockies at, at you know sometimes, and you find very dry air, which is less dense, and uh, on one side of it, on the western side, and then very moist air from a uh, southerly flow and Gulf moisture coming out uh, out of the south. Of course, that's where southerly flow comes from out of the south, and it brings moisture out of the Gulf out ahead of that dry line, and that separation of air masses, that boundaries where you often find severe weather, convection, and tornado outbreaks as it turns out. And that is the dry line, folks, and that's the correct answer. And also today, way back in 1951, the sitcom I Love Lucy, starring Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz, premiered on CBS. It would become a groundbreaking and enduring classic of American comedy. Now you know a little bit about history and entertainment history course you know the weather and as always this is cold rain reminding you that the weather runs 24 7 but i got you covered right here right now 48 14 on cold rain's weather world and uh, thank you again for being here i hope you have a wonderful day we'll be back tomorrow with another episode in the meantime god bless and have a great afternoon